Hi everyone, my name is Gavin Whitlock and I'm an ITOM Solution Consultant with ServiceNow. Today we'll be going over the Terraform Connector, which is part of the Cloud Provisioning and Governance module within the ITOM suite of applications. For our agenda, we'll cover the configuration provider setup, we'll talk about cloud catalog item setup, and then of course resource provisioning and deprovisioning. Let's get started. So the first thing you'll want to do is navigate to the cloud admin portal. From the cloud admin portal on the left-hand toolbar, select manage and then config management. And from here, we'll build out our config provider. So if I click new, I'll see a form that allows me to fill out my config provider name, the provider itself, which in this case will be Terraform environment. That's because we're using an open source version of Terraform and it's on a Linux server. I'll then um, pre-fill um, the URL for my Linux server. And then the base directory under which I have saved my Terraform templates. I'll select a credential and I just pre-built SSH credentials so that um, when we run discovery, or execute any Terraform commands, it has the ability to log into that Linux server or SSH in. I'll go ahead and hit submit. And then I'll select the config provider that we just built. And then I will kick off a discovery run to go out and grab those Terraform templates. As you can see, the templates were already discovered, so I'll click on them just to ensure that they were discovered appropriately. I can see the two Terraform templates that I built were discovered. So if I click in the main, I can view the content of that template. And go back and click into the variables template. And what I wanna point out here is this configuration variable. So this is just a complex uh, variable within Terraform, um, and this is what we'll use to construct the details of the resources that we want to provision in AWS via Terraform. Okay, next thing we need to do is start to build out our cloud catalog item. So if I click on design on the left hand toolbar, click on cloud catalog items, and then click on create cloud catalog item. So I'll go ahead and start to fill out the details within this form. You know, first, the name of the catalog item itself. I will then update the catalogs under which this catalog item will appear, adding in the service catalog. Um, this just makes it accessible via the employee center. I'll then update the source for config management template, select Terraform environment, and select the provider that we just built. I'll go ahead and hit save, and then we'll see the related links populate down below. What we need to do next is add in the cloud templates that we recently discovered on our Linux server. So if I click new, um, under the configuration installable dropdown, I'll just type in the name of the Terraform templates that we discovered, which in this case is just templates. I'll hit save. Um, and then I can see the details of those templates just concatenated in one single view. Um, and then after this, view, making sure everything looks correct, I'll go ahead and activate this cloud template. Now, the next thing we need to do is build out our variable set. Our variable set um, will give us the ability to define the different details of the resources that we wanna build within AWS. So if I click variable set tab, click new, um, one thing I want to point out here is the type is usually a read-only option. If I right-click and hit Configure Dictionary on that field value, um, I'll be able to uncheck that read-only checkbox. As you can see, I've already done this, um, so I'll just go ahead and go back. So I'll start to fill out this form, entering the name of the variable set, in this case, just request items. I'll then select the type, which will be multi-row. 
And then the layout, which will be uh, two columns alternating sides, really depends on how you want this to look on the end user side. I'll hit save. And then I'll start to add the variables to this variable set. So in all, I'll add eight variables, but this is a fully configurable section based on what resources you want to add and what details you want to add to those resources. Um, I am just going to be creating an EC2 instance, so I'll be adding um, a couple tags, I'll be adding AMI, I'll be adding security group, subnet, instance type, um, and a field for number of instances. And you can use any type, variable types that you'd like, whether it's a reference field, as you can see here, I'm pull, pulling in uh, the business application um, because I want that to be a tag attached to the EC2. I'll add a few others. I'll also, you'll also see me adding in some default values here. Uh, things like default instant type will be T2 micro. And a default value for the AMI. What I want to point out here is notice that the question is different from the name. And that's because you want the name to correspond to the variable that is listed in the Terraform template. Um, so for VPCs, it's, or security groups rather, it's VPC underscore security underscore groups underscore IDs. All right, so that completes all the variables. The next thing I want to do is add a catalog client script. And what this will allow us to do is take all the details that we entered in that newly created variable set and throw it into a JSON object um, to then uh, be placed into our Terraform template. Um, and this is going to be triggered uh, via on submit. So when we submit this catalog item, it'll JSONify everything and put it in the appropriate place. And as you can see here, I'll just quickly copy and paste a function that I already have written out. And what I want to point out at the bottom here is under that set value method, um, the point where I'm placing it has to match the catalog item. So it's just the catalog item name underscore configuration, because that's the name of the variable where that JSON object needs to go. The next thing I want to do is actually um, under the provision variable set um, and the um, that variable that I was just talking about where the um, JSON goes, I want to make this not mandatory. Um, that is just because when I go to submit, if it's mandatory, it'll technically be blank. Um, so we just got to make sure it's not mandatory. All right. The One of the last things we want to do here is update the connected content. And so this is essentially just adding in a category um, where this catalog item will live within the employee center. So I'll just choose IT for IT. Next thing I want to do is actually go to the employee center and request this catalog item. So if I click the catalog item that we just built, I'll go ahead and complete all the details within the form itself, choosing the appropriate AWS account, choosing the appropriate region, naming the stack, selecting the user group. Of course, the user group is the one that handles all the change requests, all the tasks associated with this catalog item, you know, cost center, business service, then I can go down to the variable set that we just created, hit add, and start to add in rows to this table to generate um, resources um, that will be provisioned in AWS. So I'll just use a, pretty much all the defaults here, but I'll create two instances, hit add, and then I'll go ahead and hit order now. And you can see here the JSON that populated as a result of us filling out um, that variable set. And here are all the steps that need to be taken. So approval, go through. If it's already approved, hit refresh again, and then we'll see that deployment was successful. Jumping over to the AWS console, I just want to show you that these two instances were created. You can see all the details. We can see the tags that were applied. So obviously a successful deployment. Going back into the ServiceNow instance, I'm going to navigate to the cloud user portal. And from here, I'll click on View Activities, um, look at the, the stack that was just created, and View Stack Details. I can then see all the resources that were created. If 
if I click on the resources uh, option itself and click on one of those resources, I can actually take individual actions on those resources. So in this case, I'll just hit stop to stop that one EC2 instance. And then from here, I'll jump over back into the AWS console just to show you that that individual um, EC2 instance actually is stopped. So I just need to remove the running filter. And then we can see that email one instance is stopping. But I can also take actions on the entire stack itself. Um, in this case, I wanted to deep provision the entire stack. So tear down both those EC2 instances that we created. So if I go over to the stack details, similar to the operations that we took on the individual resource, I can take active, uh, uh, actions on the stack itself. So I'll select deep provision. It'll go through some steps. And eventually, it'll show that this stack is terminated uh, within our ServiceNow instance. And then if we jump back over to the AWS console and refresh, we can see that those two EC2 instances have been terminated. The last thing I want to do is just show how this populates within the CMDB, the VM instances table. So you can see those two VM instances populate here, but now they have, their state is terminated. Thank you. Uh, and I hope this is helpful.